The Final Fantasy saga is one of our favorite game series. From one game to another, there are several things that remain. One of all is the present of chocobos, a fantastic animal used as a mount. The chocobos in games are airy, like many other animals with fur. Today we recreate this effect on Unity. The fur effect can be tackled in many ways, from the most approximate to the most specific ones. This is strongly dependent on the context of the application and what are our needs. A good analysis of this is on the Unity blog in the article about Sherman. We want to achieve a real-time solution but with really good details, so in this case we choose to proceed with the geometry shader. But before starting, we need some references. <laughs> Geometry Shader is a particular kind of shader that is executed after the vertex and before the fragment. A Geometry Shader takes a primitive as input and can generate another one. We use this to generate a pentagon that represents an air or a feather. Above the geometry declaration we have the max vert count, this tells the GPU how many vertices the geometry can emit at the most. So before starting we have to understand how many vertices we need. To figure this out we have imagined our final goal. On a surface we want to create a feather or a hair for every triangle that we have. But this way we wouldn't have a base anymore and we'll totally lose the original shape of the model. So we also need the original surface itself. We could have done that either with another pass using vertex and fragment or here in the geometry. We prefer to do that in the geometry, to don't have to deal with multiple passes when we will implement the shadows. So we have at least three points plus the point that compose the filler. Talking about the feeder, we subdivided it in parts. This allows us to bend the geometry if we need it. This means that for the feeder we have two points for every part, plus the one for the top vertex. So if we divide the feeder in three parts, we can easily calculate the number of the vertex, 10. We have exposed three properties to edit the feeder shapes. This way we could customize the material and let it assume the aspect that we want, either hairs or feathers. Also we added a pseudo random value to the aid to create irregularity. So for each vertex we can calculate the current position based on these parameters and populate the geometry structure. Let's look at the color. Every feather uses a color gradient from bottom to top. The color lerp using the y value of the UV as weight. That means that the vertices that make up the original shape will use the bottom color creating a more convincing depth effect. Also, the feather used the average value of the original triangle's UV to sample the texture. These create, using a texture, the effect that our mesh is really hairy. The feathers of our shader are now dependent on the vertex density of the target mesh. So if we would use this shader on a low poly model, we'll see just a few feathers. This is why we choose to use tessellation. Tessellation is a technique that allows us to enlarge the number of vertices subdividing the primitives that compose a mesh. To be more specific, we need to implement the hull and the domain programs. They are responsible for determining how the mesh should be subdivided, calculate the actual coordinates and derive the new vertices. We expose a parameter called tessellation that we use to tell at the whole program how to subdivide the mesh. If you want to go deeper into this argument, Catlike Coding made a really good explained article. The link is in the description. We want to bend our feather following the gravity or maybe other forces to make the effect more dynamic.
To do that, we declare a bend direction vector and apply that to the vertices' positions. We also use the bend factor parameter to determine how the feather has to bend. For instance, we can bend it completely or just at the top. In order to have a good color result, we want to implement the shadows. In a Unity shader, to receive the shadows correctly, you have also to cast them. To do that, Unity comes with some useful macro allowing us to project and receive shadows. We can use that because we are in forward and not in deferred mode. After completing the shader, we downloaded the Chocobo models from Sketchfab. We prepare some different materials for our Chocobo and setting up the scene. This is the final result. Tell us what you think about this shader in a comment below. The project is available on GitHub. You can use that to create airy animals or even grass. But if you're looking for a grass shader, we recommend the Restance article. Don't forget to subscribe, smash the like button and follow us on the other socials. Also, if you want, we have a Discord server dedicated to Unity and Game Dev. See you next time. Cheers!